Hello again, I'm Lost. In this episode, we're gonna go through all the functions that you can put inside main.lua. Now, I should mention to start with, there's no limit to the functions you can put within main.lua. However, there are some functions that closely tie to the game engine that are very important to put in main.lua. Um, other ones, you can simply put in a separate Lua file and uh, load them with a function called require. Um, so first thing I'll show you is in our previous videos, we looked at love.load and love.draw. Love.load was the one that happens before anything else. Love.draw is the one that allows you to actually draw things to the screen. But there are lots of other ones that can go in main.lua that cause something to happen in the game engine. So if we pop into the wiki, remember you're going to use the wiki a lot, you might as well bookmark it. And we're going to look into love the module. Now there's a lot of information here, but what we're looking at today is, I went past it, callbacks. There we go, you can see callbacks here. All right, so general callbacks, there are joystick callbacks. Um, you can see a vast amount of callbacks have been added in 0.10.0 and 0.9.0 or two. Um, before then there were a lot less. It's a fairly recent phenomena that there are so many different callbacks. I haven't used a lot of them. Um, the majority of my love experience has been in 0.9.0. So today I'm just gonna go through the ones that I've, I know and use. They're kind of the, the core of the game engine. But I will try and touch on the other ones because uh, you know most of them should be known about. So, the one that happens first, love.load. Let's pop in here. It does take an argument. Command line arguments given. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. So it actually takes a table of the arguments that you put into command line. I didn't know that. So let's let's try that out. Let's try that out. So we're going to put in arg. Uh, my apologies to the developer of Love IDE. I was having a go at him before for mentioning that there's an argument taken in here. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go print. And I'm gonna go unpack. And this is a Lua function. This is not a love function. So if you don't know Lua, you can go to the Lua documents to find out how unpack works. Basically unpack takes a table and spits out a list of variables not in a table. So we're gonna unpack the args table and print that. So if I go save here, we are going to go into hello world, open our command window. We're gonna go love dot this is an arc so there we go it was printed and actually apparently dot was an arg that's news to me let's try it without the dot hmm see without the dot it hasn't loaded whatever we had before right it's no game so the dot is important but the dot will also be your first argument, apparently. So we've learned something here. Okay, cool. We have definitely learned something. So that's love load. Love load will always be executed before things like love.update and draw and all those other ones. Load is called exactly once at the beginning. So you're going to want to do a lot of your loading type things. You're going to want to, you know, load any graphical assets or any sound assets. You're going to want to initialize various things about your game in love.load. So they've given an example here. They load an image um, into a variable called hamster. They load a couple of variables in, initialize a couple of variables, and then they draw the hamster at these variables. That's love.load. You're going to have probably a lot of your game in love.load. What else is important? Draw. We've already looked at draw. So, use to draw on the screen every frame. So the example they give here, and, and you notice draw doesn't take any arguments, it's just, uh, it just does what's inside um, love.draw. Th the reason it doesn't take any arguments is because the, the game engine itself calls love.draw and it will never call love.draw with any arguments. 
So there's nothing within love.draw that you can actually pass uh, an argument to from love.draw. There won't be an argument passed whenever it's called and it will be called uh, you know, every frame. So that could be 60 times per second. It could be more, could be less. Um, frame rate is not something I've found to be easy to set, but I have done it before and I'll probably cover that in, I'm going to say episode seven, which is something I said, I think in the last video. Uh, so yeah, the example they give us is drawing the image that was loaded <laughs> in love.load. So it's, it's the exact same example we saw before. Load and draw are kind of the basic things. Um, however, the other thing that goes in what I'm going to say is the holy trinity of callbacks is update. Now, update's the state of the game every frame. The argument dt absolutely must be passed to, uh, what, what, what can I say? Uh, dt is something the game engine tells you. It tells you it took this amount of time between the previous frame and this frame. And uh, if you don't know how that works, it might not seem immediately obvious about why that's important. Um, but if you do know how that works, uh, you do. Um, I'll cover it in a later episode. For now, we're just going to talk about love.update. Um, you're going to have a lot of logic for your game inside love.update. There's, there's almost no application you could build that won't have updates at various times. Um, you know, it, it's not an interactive thing if it doesn't have an update function. What we created here is not an interactive thing, right? I can click, I can type, it doesn't do anything. There's no update function, so of course nothing can happen. Um, but if you want things to happen, you need the update function to be doing things. Probably. Most of the time you will have one. In fact, any any game, I'm going to say any game you create will have an update function. It's only other maybe very basic things you can create in Love Game Engine that wouldn't have an update function. So uh, those are things that kind of happen within the game. We're now going to move on to ways to interact with the game. So the first one I'm thinking of is, there used to be a key pressed. Possibly they've removed those. Hmm, interesting. Well, we're going to go to mouse moved, mouse pressed, mouse released. Hmm. Mouse moved is newish, so I haven't used that. Pressed and released, I've definitely used. So, hmm, okay, it's available since 0 0.10.0. .0. This variant is not supported in earlier versions. Um, earlier variants existed, but they obviously didn't work the same as it does currently. So currently the reason that they've overhauled mouse pressed is because they can, they have this new option is touch. So if I click within the game, that click is handled by the game engine and passed to the internal logic in the form of mouse pressed. So what I can do is click and okay. All right. All right. We're going to, we're going to try this out. So love.mouse pressed. XY button is touch. We don't need that. We're going to put it in anyway. So what happens is, right? Okay, I'm formulating an idea as we speak. So we're going to say, we're going to say, we're going to say X equals zero, Y equals zero within love.draw, we're going to get the graphics to be printed at X and Y. And when the mouse is pressed, we're going to say X equals X and Y equals Y. Now to make it more clear exactly what's happening, we're going to say print X equals zero and print X equals Y. And we're going to be printing things at print X and print Y. And when we click somewhere, print X is going to become wherever we clicked and print Y is going to become where we clicked on the Y. You know what I mean? So if I click here now, now whenever I click somewhere, hello world starts being drawn to that place. This is what I was saying about not necessarily needing an update function. 
because um, you can still do things without an update function. Uh, not many. You don't want to be calling your update logic within the draw frame because what happens is the update function is called before the draw function every frame. So if you want something to happen before you're drawing it to the screen, you put it in the update function. I mean, it, it sounds a little complicated, but these things mostly handle themselves. So right, we've done some cool stuff there. What other callbacks do we have? Mouse released works exactly the same as mouse pressed. And what we can also do is copy mouse pressed and released and have them be the same function, right? And now if I play this here, when I click, it goes somewhere. When I release, oh, I really thought that was gonna go, start moving to wherever I released it. I, oh, <laughs> I didn't change it. Yeah, so now that I've changed it to mouse released, it should work how I was thinking. Press, release, press, release, press, release. If I just click as I'm moving, you can see it move twice. So that's pretty cool. We are, we are doing things. We are interacting with the game engine at this stage and we're learning about the game engine and how to, how to control it, how to interact with it. So if I wanted the text to be drawn wherever my mouse is at any given time, I could simply change one of these to mouse moved. Okay, well that, that had some interesting effects. But don't blame the IDE. So, <laughs> all right, function, love mouse moved. X, Y, DX, DY. So DX, DY is how far the mouse traveled within the time between the previous frame and the current frame. You'd imagine the distance won't be far between frames. You know, it might be a couple of pixels moved every frame if we've got 60 frames per second. So we don't really need to touch those for what we're doing here. We save that and run that. Now we've got Hello World being drawn wherever our mouse happens to be. So that's pretty cool, right? And what I could do is I could toggle whether it follows the cursor by clicking. And that's the kind of fun thing I would do when I'm just playing around, but I won't show you that on the screen. We've got other things to look at. Oh yeah, here we go. Key pressed and released. I don't know how I didn't see those before. So they, these have been around forever. And this is how you interact with the game using the keyboard. So key pressed, uh, we can just, we can pop that in here. Like that. Again, love ID, you are lagging. Uh, scan code, I think, was what we were looking at here, yeah. And so what we can do is this hello world, we're now going to remove it from our draw function. We're going to say print str, str generally means string, equals hello world. And we are going to print the print string. And when a key is pressed, we are going to say print string equals print string, but add the key we just pressed to the end of print string. Now the dot dot will join two strings together. It's a concatenation, uh, I wanna say statement is what the dot dot might be. So let's try that. So it's following things and if I type exclamation, ooh, hoo hoo. Attempt to concatenate global print, print, ah, so you see it says P-R-I-N, there's no T there. That's my typing being bad. Yeah, yeah, this is what IDEs are good for. Um, if I was paying attention, I could have scrolled down here to print straw because I've, I've already initialized this variable and just hit enter. That's, that's why we're using Atom so that we have that kind of function. You don't have that function if you're just doing this in Notepad. So let's try that again. If I press shift, it actually puts in L shift because I wanted to do exclamation mark. Uh, I can't in this case because what I'm doing is a very quick naive implementation. 
space, 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 typing, right? Typing. We don't have a way of deleting things because if I press delete or backspace, <laughs> it just prints backspace into, it, it adds it to the string we're printing. Um, so if you want to create a, like a Word document, right? A document uh, application. This is not how you do it. <laughs> this is not the way. Um, but it's a good way to show you key pressed. So key released is the same as how we saw mouse press, mouse released. What else can we see? Directory dropped. Um, so I haven't used this disclaimer, but I think the idea is you can drag a directory into the window. Uh, I want to try it. Love.directory dropped path, and we're gonna, now we're going to do print stir equals path. So let's try that out. I'm going to type a bit. Now, if I drag the hello world directory into here, there we go. C uses John documents live hello world. Right, that's pretty cool. Already we're doing a lot of things. So these are the ways you interact with the game engine. What else can we have a look at? This is going to be a long video, uh, but I want to go through all of these callbacks in one video. Error hand, the error handler used to display error messages. So the error message. Generally speaking, if you have an error, it is displayed within the actual game window. Um, but what you can do is you can use error hand to, uh, instead of having the game, I'm going to say crash. When you get that blue screen, your game's basically crashed. It's not retrievable. You can't move on from the crash. It's over. You got to start it from scratch if you want to continue playing. Um, so the error handling is so that you can avoid that issue. File dropped we've been through. Draw we've been through. Focus. So this is triggered when the window receives or loses focus. So right now, the window that is focused is Chrome. If I click out to Atom, Atom is the one that's been focused. Chrome's now the one focused, Atom's now the one focused. Your game can kind of realize when it's no longer in focus. And the reason you might want to detect that is you might want your game to pause whenever it's not the, the window that's in focus. Because um, if it's not in focus, then the person can't actually control the game, most likely. You know, if, if it's the keyboard or mouse controlled game, I'm going to say keyboard, right? Whichever window is in focus is the one that the keyboard can interact with. So if your game is no longer in focus, you can't use the keyboard to play the game. You probably want your game to be paused until the game is back in focus. Uh, low memory, another one I haven't used because it's 0.10.0. I'm diving into 0.10.0 for this series. I haven't actually used it prior to this series, so bear with me. When the system is running out of memory on mobile devices, generally speaking, uh, large devices, laptops, um, PCs, you know, proper computers, they don't tend to run out of memory a lot because memory is cheap enough that you can get it in large quantities. Uh, for mobile devices, you can't necessarily fit much memory into the game. So mobile operating systems may forcefully kill the game if it uses too much memory. So any non-critical resources should be removed if possible. So this is for your memory management if you are creating a mobile game. You might find that you have to remove some, maybe you've loaded some uh, levels, maybe you've loaded some pictures, you know, some kind of asset you've loaded within your game. And instead of having your game crash, um, or be closed by your operating system, be it iOS or Android or something else, uh, it's probably better to just kill some assets from your game. Um, so this is what low memory is for. We move down a bit, quit. This callback function is triggered when the game is closed. Now, if the game is being closed, right, let's say closing would be when you click on the X thing. So I'll show you that one. If I click the X up here, it's closing the game. Why would you want to detect when that's happening? Well, you probably want to save some data um, when someone closes their game, right? Maybe you are running a game that is in hardcore mode format. So if someone closes their game to avoid 
saving their progress, uh, you might be tricky and actually notice that they've closed the game and save the progress for them, so they can't avoid saving their progress. Um, or maybe you're just trying to do them a favor and save their progress when they forget to. That's why you might want to detect love.quit. Interestingly enough, you can, you can abort the quit process. Um, <laughs> uh, that might annoy the user. I'm thinking you might not necessarily want to do that, but um, there you go, it's up to you. There's a callback for when you resize the window. So if you've got window resizing enabled within conf.lua, uh, you're actually gonna want to know that the user has resized the window so that you can do some logic internally within the game and have things print on screen nicely because the size of the window has changed. So you're probably gonna to wanna to print things in slightly different places to where they were before to accommodate. Love.run is another episode seven thing. Um, I wanna go into detail on this. You probably don't wanna to touch love.run, but if you do, there are a lot of cool things you can do with it. So worry about that later. Text edited, I haven't used. Text input I have, thread error, much more complex than most things. Um, touch move, touch press, touch release, this is for mobile devices. Um, again, you probably don't wanna worry about those until you've already got your game working with mouse moved, mouse pressed, mouse released, and then you can kind of add kind of a mirror. I'm gonna say you kind of copy your mouse pressed, mouse moved, mouse released, and do similar stuff in here, maybe with some differences. But that's a more advanced thing. To start with in games, you don't want to start with touches, I don't think, because um, it's a relatively new phenomenon. People have been using keyboard and mouse for decades, not so much touches. So if you want to start in a place that is, uh, you know, the beaten track, um, to use an expression, then we're not going to worry about these. Love.visible and wheel moved. So we're just going to power through these. Text edited. Input method editor. I don't actually particularly know what that means. Candidate text is not the final text of the user. Use yada, yada, yada. No, I don't know how that works. We'll move on. Text input. Called when the text has been entered by the user. For example, if shift two is pressed on an American keyboard layout, then the text at will be generated. Um, so yeah, you noticed how before when I wanted to press shift and one to get an exclamation mark, it tells me L shift and one. We can fix that. So instead of key pressed, we're gonna look at text input. And we're gonna do the same thing as we had here. And we're gonna concatenate the text into it. And that what that will avoid doing is printing L shift into our paths and whatnot. So I'm actually going to comment out the key pressed logic. And that means it will no longer be executed. Now if I type shift one, you can see we're getting exclamation marks. If I press backspace, we're not getting backspace printed into it. Right, so that's pretty cool. That's um. It, it, it means that you don't have to write your own functions to put within KeyPressed to handle the user's inputs. It's already been done for you. It's part of the engine. Um, so that makes your and my life much easier when we're creating games. Um, so thanks to the developers for that. Thread errors. Threads are an advanced concept and I don't recommend most people to touch them unless they need to. There are libraries that handle threading um, and if you're not the person who's writing these libraries, it might be confusing. When I understand threads better, I'll make a video about them, but uh, not until then. Visible, callback function when window is minimized or hidden or unminimized by the user. Um, and this is probably similar to love.focus. If something is not visible, it's probably not in focus either. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know if there's a huge difference between focus and visible. Uh, obviously there is, but in terms of to the player, um, love.visible, what you put inside, it's probably not gonna be a lot different from what you put inside love.focus. And wheel moved is for the mouse wheel. 
Um, this is how I scroll with my mouse wheel, right? I can click and drag up and down with my mouse here, or I can just scroll with my mouse wheel. Um, callback function triggered when the mouse wheel is moved. Number X, number Y, amount of horizontal mouse wheel movement, amount of vertical mouse wheel movement. Now, most mouse wheels don't have uh, horizontal mouse movement. Laptops often have horizontal mouse wheels as part of their trackpad, but normal mice don't tend to have that. So I wouldn't base core game mechanics based on a horizontal mouse wheel. I actually wouldn't base any real game mechanics on mouse wheel. The only reason you're gonna to wanna to use mouse, uh, sorry, love.wheel moved is for menu navigation. And also uh, zooming in and out of a scene. Um, often that's what a mouse wheel is used for, zoom. Um, so that's all of them. We've got through them. This was a longer episode, but it needed to be done. I don't really want to split this all up um, because they're all just as important. Honorable mention goes to joysticks. Most people don't actually own joysticks. No, that's a lie actually, because joysticks these days are basically gamepads. And you'll see gamepad stuff here. Um, so, uh, the difference between a joystick and a gamepad, I'm not particularly sure how the game engine handles that. But if you've got, for example, one of the most common ones is an Xbox 360 controller. Um, if you've got one of those, you can connect it to a Windows computer really, really easily. If you have a PlayStation 3 or 4 controller, I think they can both be connected to Windows with a bit of uh, playing around with drivers. Um, I'm sure Xbox One controllers are incredibly easy to hook up to Windows. All of those controllers, I don't know how easy they are to hook up to a Mac or Linux machine. I have never tried that myself. There's also the Steam controller, is now a thing. Um, and joystick is how you handle, uh, these functions are how you handle all of those different, technically they're called gamepads, um, the old controller you have from a console. So I think we've got through all of it. Uh, there are a lot more things on this page, but they are not things that are going to be put inside main.lua. Um, so that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me if you made it all the way through.